I was talking to a client who said, you know what, Dan, I understand the point of lookups and I can see information from our linked records inside of Airtable, but I'd love to see some examples in context of how we might be able to utilize them. So in this video, we're going to talk about three different ways we can utilize lookups. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, an Airtable implementation partner. So we're going to take a look at these use cases through the context of customer support. And of course, this can apply to many different other industries and departments, but I thought this would be able to create a little bit of additional context around the issue. So for customer support, we typically have a table called cases or tickets, really the same kind of concept. Our customers have an issue and they want to log a new case or ticket about what their issue is, and then we can triage it from there. We have our case record and I want to be able to have a contact, a linked record, a contact that we choose, and I want to display information about the customer record, which in this case is pulling from accounts. So we've got Rose Fowler and Bearpaw Solutions. Well, let's say we want to see the address from the account record, then we really need a lookup to a lookup. So what we're doing in this case is on the contact record, we have added an account address lookup field. So if I edit this, I can see I created a lookup and we're looking at the linked account relationship and we're pulling in the address from that account. So really that address lives over here on our account record. So in our cases, now we're saying, let's go ahead and show that. If we edit that, it's pulling it now from the contact. So we're able to say, hey, from the account, pull that address onto the contact. And now from the case, pull that contact's account address onto the case. And that's how we can have these multiple relationships away lookups to be able to enrich our data this way. But this still requires the customer support team to manually add the contact to this record, which isn't the greatest experience. We want this information just to show automatically. So in the case where let's pretend this came in from a form, we're going to keep this really simple. We're just going to collect that user's email address. And then once they submit their email, we're going to pull in the rest of the information. Now, why wouldn't we add the contact linked record here and they could choose their contact? Well, because we don't want to expose that information to other clients. You don't want to suddenly give your entire database worth of contact information just to anybody who's filling out a form. We're going to ask them for their email address, and then we're going to run an automation in the background, which is going to find that and then be able to link it all together. And we don't have to worry then about putting in the contact or the account or finding the address. It's going to do that all automatically for us. So inside of my automations, I've created one to link a contact to a case. And I'm running this on when a form is submitted. So when there's a case and it's coming in from our support form, that's what's going to trigger this automation. Then we're going to run a find records step. And in here, we're going to look for contacts from our contacts table. And we're going to say where that contacts email address matches the email that came in from the support form. That's going to come to our case record. So when that contact's email address contains, and we'll choose from a dynamic value here, and we'll say when it matches up with that email address that was just submitted, that's how we're going to find that contact. So we're using it as a key or a unique identifier. And it's pretty safe to say that those should be unique values. We shouldn't have multiple people with the same email address, which is why this step is going to work. Could add some edge cases here, but this is a simple version of this. So once we find that, then what we're going to do is we're going to use our cases table and we're going to grab the Airtable record ID from that very first step and inject it here so we know which record to update. And then we're just going to plug in a list of the Airtable record IDs from that find records step. So we can say make a new list of Airtable record IDs and it's going to inject that in there and create that relationship that we needed. Now, I know I'm going through this kind of quickly because my focus really isn't on the automation here. It's how we can simplify that process for the lookups. But I go through this in a number of other videos as well. So let's head back into our support form here and we're just going to plug in an email address. And of course, we could add other fields that we need, but we really only care about that email. So we'll press submit. We'll head back here and you can see it's created our record with the email address. And then that automation is going to run and you can see it's pulled in that contact because it found that contact and we didn't do anything in the automation to find the customer or account record or that address because remember that's just the default behavior of how those lookups work. Now in this next use case let's say we want to prioritize the order of our cases based on when the client's renewal was because if they have a renewal in a couple of weeks and they have a huge issue we want to make sure that we triage that really quickly for them. On our account record 
let's say that we had a date, a renewal date, and this is when we need to renew that account. Therefore, we need to expose that information on our case. So on our case, we've added a lookup here. And so my lookup value is linked customer record. In this case, I'm just doing the customer record directly as opposed to being based on the contacts account. And just because it's a little bit more streamlined this way. If we've created a formula and all we're doing is a really basic date time diff where we're saying, take that renewal date and how many days away is it from today? And we count that in days. Now we've got that information to have the days until renewal by taking the context of today's date which is on the case record, which isn't part of the account record. And so we can take the renewal date, which is on the account record, and marry those two together inside of a formula. And in this final use case, we're going to talk about automations in conjunction with lookups. On my account record, we have a customer tier of platinum, gold, or silver, and we're going to add a different SLA or service level agreement. How many hours do we have to respond within that window until you get a response from our customer support team? So we're going to pull that information in. This is a really simple one. We can pull it from our account record here, which we're calling our customer in this case, and we want to display that customer tier. Now we need to create an automation again, and we have this one for our platinum tier SLA. So if they're on the enterprise plan, the platinum plan, we're going to say, we gotta get back to you within eight hours with an initial response. So in this case, the trigger, is going to be four cases, and we're going to say when the tier has any of platinum. And this tier is that lookup in this case. So we don't have to pull information from another table. The lookup is doing all the heavy lifting here to say the tier needs to match this. So if the tier is platinum, then we're just going to do a really simple update of the record. I created a formula in the background for adding eight hours to it. We're updating the existing record from the trigger here. We're updating that value plus the eight hours. So if we come back into our case data here and we create a new record and we add our customer to this, we can see that the tier pulls in. And then in a second here, we see our SLA has been applied. So, hey, support team, we got to be able to respond within this time frame. Let's prioritize this case that we're working on. I hope this was helpful for you to see a couple different ways in which you might utilize lookups to simplify information inside of your base. If you have any questions about getting started with Airtable, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.